everyone, this is Kyle from Tubes and Transistors at blogspot.com. Today we are going to be learning about how to solder. Uh, we are going to do a, a simple little project. Uh, it's called a phototheremin. It's using uh, a resistor that, a variable resistor that light, light controls. It's fun, um, inexpensive. You could probably build one for under $10. There's only about seven components to it, and we'll go over some of the things. First thing, whenever you're building something, you have your schematic. I drew mine out from a previous drawing. It has all the parts I need. And then I also took the liberty, and I started the project off. Normally, you don't want to put your big pieces on here first. Um, the idea is when you put your small pieces on and you turn it over to go solder they'll stand, the pieces will push against the table and that'll keep them taut. Um, with this project because there's no physical layout, it's not a, pre, a PCB board, uh, I decided where I wanted the big stuff to go so that I can figure out where the littler stuff would go and make it all look nice and neat in the end. So. Um, yeah, I basically soldered this. You can see on this side of the board, some of the lines connect. I even marked which side is going to be my negative, which side is going to be my positive. I did that on both sides so that I would know. Um, good little helpful hint. So you always want to have permanent marker with you. A couple other tools. Uh, wire cutters. Wire strippers needle nose pliers um, of course the soldering iron some solder I use lead core solder the, uh, there is solder that does not use lead it is better for you the idea with the lead solder is when you have a good solder you'll know because it turns shiny whereas opposed to what's called a cold solder joint will be dull that's the reason why a lot of people still like to use the, the lead solder because you can tell the difference between a good and a bad solder. Um, I also have this, it's called tip tinner. You dip the tip of your iron in there and instead of having to put solder on the tip of your iron before you go to solder every time it tins it and it makes the whole process a lot easier. Um, other than that, let's get started. Okay, so I've made some decisions on where I want all my pieces to go. Um, I'm keeping most of my components up towards the top of the board. I put my photo resistor, which is going to control, right in the middle, so you can block light right there, but still keep it separated from the majority of the components. Um, I'm going to go ahead and solder it just like this, and then I'm going to add some jumper wires um, further down in the board to connect things to the switch. So let's get started. So we're going to turn this over. And a little trick, when you don't do the smaller components first, after you push the component through, you can just bend the lead off to the side a little bit, and that allows it to stay in place. So, we're going to turn the board over. We're going to grab a piece of solder. I'll bend this down so we can see. We're going to take the iron, going to dab it on the sponge, just a little bit in the tip tinner, and we're going to go ahead and start soldering all the leads. Now I'm not a surgeon, but it definitely helps to have steady hands. So a lot of times it's finding however you're comfortable holding it, but I like to hold both of them like they're pencils, and that way I can just hold the soldering iron. What you do is you place it down on the trace and the lead at the same time, and then just like you're pushing a pencil in or a dart, you push down, touching the solder to the trace, and it melts slowly around it. What you want is a nice little bead that is nice and shiny you 
want to make sure it's not dull. And that there's no, it fills out the entire trace. Um, some of these, because they, they have multiple little traces on the same, same spot, I'm not filling it out. That way I can put my jumper wire there. But as you can see, they're all nice and shiny. And I don't see any cold solder joints. So I'm going to make some little jumper wires. Then I'll fit those and we'll come back, we'll finish it, and we'll see if it works. Okay, so I've created jumpers for everything here. Um, hooked up the switch. I'm just going to go ahead, turn this over, solder. After we're done soldering these, there'll be one more step before we put the battery in. And then we'll see if it's working or not. Something important, um, you really want to make sure that you're not having leads touch that aren't supposed to be touching. Could cause component failure. You just want to make sure everything is properly separated so that you're not given power to, say, the ground or vice versa. Okay, so we have everything hooked up. Last thing I'm going to do before we check it is I'm going to go ahead and clip some of these leads that are a little long. Be sure to wear safety glasses when you're doing this. Let's put the battery in, do one last check. Make sure everything is hooked up correctly. And it works. The more light, the less sound you get. Kind of spacey, kind of fun. Really simple to build. And... That is how to solder. If you have any questions, if you want me to go over anything else, just let me know. Um, I'm Kyle Schroeder from Tubes and Transistors at blogspot.com. Thank you for following. Thank you for reading. Your feedback is always welcome. Have a good day.